just to translate it into my language, what you're calling um, sort of the uh, perception of the spaciousness, the fluidity, the quote perception, that comes under the category of what I call integration as a technical term within the unified mindfulness system. So integration, I mean, what does it mean? I mean, in philosophy and yoga, I mean, whatever, but within unified mindfulness, integration refers to the endeavor of making the spaciousness, energy, nothingness, making that something that is two things, fulfilling for the practitioner and functional mm -hmm. for the practitioner. Mm -hmm. So experience of emptiness is not no self flow, whatever you want to call it, has a tendency to pretty radically increase a person's um, fulfillment and functionality. It carries an enormous potential for them to do that as a human being, um, but it only measures liberation. Um, it doesn't necessarily measure how the liberation is integrated into something that is fulfilling and appropriate as a human being. That's a whole other issue. So I just wanted to mention that. And yeah. so far, and I sense that your story probably goes a few steps further, um, and I'm all ears. Uh, uh, what's that expression in Chinese? Xi Har Gong Ting. It means uh, I wash out my ears and I listen respectfully. <laughs> Four characters in Chinese. Um, so I think there's maybe a few more steps, but just to halt at a moment. So far, we've come to the idea that there might be various ways in which we could suspend something that would allow for the more raw processing or the less derived or less processed, you use thematize, heuristicized. Those are interesting words. We can talk about that. I'm interested. But I'm going to just say derived or processed mm -hmm. or responded to or it's controlled. Good. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's what the top does all right. of the above right yes so so far just so far you've mostly spoken in a way that i've often heard spoken and certainly a valid way which is well what's the raw sense data can we get down to more and more of that and that's a dimension that is a dimension of it in fact what the Buddhists are going to, some Buddhists are going to claim is that's ground truth physical reality showing itself to the meditator. Mm -hmm. The reason it seems like vibrating atoms is it really is vibrating atoms. <laughs> uh, so one of the questions you're asking is, I mean, Shenzhen calls it expansion contraction, but that's just yang yin. That's just what everyone's been calling it. Life, death, you know, but uh, arising, passing. Uh, but there's all of these other flavors of flow and spaciousness that they talk about. Um, is, how does that relate to what a hard-nosed scientist would call our best picture of the so-called physical world? So we've got, you might say that the hard-nosed meditator gives you 
a good picture of the subjective world. <laughs> and the hard nosed scientist gives you a good picture of the objective world. If they both hold their pictures lightly enough, they can communicate. But if the meditator is trying to get some use science to sell their product, mm -hmm. no, that's not going to work. But on the other hand, if the some scientists are actually not very scientific, they're religious about science. It, it's a, a form of fundam they they would never think of it, but they've made it a form of fundamentalism. They're close-minded to dialogue um, from the get-go. So that can be a problem on the scientist side. My thing is though, so it is a question. It's an interesting question. Why does all this talk about space and what have you sound so much like science? like physics.